in your stories, there's always that recurring character, you know, Brooklyn. Brooklyn's a, a, a person. Uh, right, what I... But you, real, but you, what but I you, do, I call it the Chronicles of Brooklyn. And those films are, she's gonna have it, do the right thing, clockers, Crooklyn, he got game, half of Jungle Fever. Which is amazing. Thank you, and, and Red Hook Summer. So though that's six films. I love Brooklyn. We call it the Republic of Brooklyn, New York. I stole that from uh, the borough president, Marty Markowitz. That was his thing. Welcome to the Republic of Brooklyn. And Brooklyn's a magical place. Biggie, Jay-Z, I mean, we go on and on and on. Jackie Robinson, I mean, the culture here is, is just, it's always been like that. And, uh, there's something magical about Brooklyn, that, that Woody Allen, Barbra Streisand. Well, now, wait a minute, Woody Allen. They compared you to him. What was that like? That was only after one film. They said Woody Allen where I, they said I was a black Woody Allen after She's Gonna Have It. We're both small, a stature, glasses. I just think after it's like After school a... day, they said that he's not Woody Allen. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they, hey, they squashed that. But, the, but you know what? Especially have to do the right thing. No, but, but, but the quirkiness continued. And that's what I love about your films. The quirkiness, but they stopped. The they consistency stopped the of the quirkiness is, is amazing. Mm -hmm. Because when you flip it on something like a Malcolm X, mm -hmm. you know, it just becomes a whole, it becomes a whole different thing, but all the while still utilizing like the vehicle of all things and, 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 and the process of Spike Lee just totally transforms that. Well, look, you know this. So I don't have to tell you this, so this is really for the people who are watching. What you and, you and I and people, not just musicians or, or filmmakers, whatever you do, mm -hmm. if you love what you do, you're blessed. And I, you know, I speak at many colleges and, and uh, universities. I always say this, I always try to, and, to, to get this to young minds and listen to this. Because so many of our young people are choosing majors and choosing a path, a path of life that's a road to destruction because they're based it, they're based it oh, solely money. on yeah. how much money make. can I make? Yeah. What motherfucking majors can make me the most motherfucking money? That's right. And you end up miserable. For the rest of your life. Exactly. Billionaires that are miserable. Blowing their brains out. So we're very, we're blessed because we're we aware. would do we would do what we're doing for free That's because right. the key is have a find something that you love because you love something it's not a job you're no longer working you're not working now if you have a motherfucking job you hate they need a crane to get your ass out of job out of the bed That's right but with us you can't pull us out you of can't where because, we are man you can how long you stay in the studio consecutively man. how many hours man somewhere between eight and 10 hours. There you go. There's been times where it's 14. When we're, shooting day, when we're shooting days, our calls usually at six o'clock. You know, to this day, it's only when I'm really tired, but most of the time I don't need a, an alarm clock. Boom, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go. That's crazy. I'm my, excited. My time like that is like 9, 9 a.m. for me. Nine, I would just wake up right around 9 a.m. Yeah. It's a little crazy. Are you more creative in the morning or night? You know what's no. so funny? You got you musicians be hanging out late. I can't hang with you guys. I think I'm a little bit different in yeah. that sense. I like I want to go home at, at 11, 12 o'clock. I write the best on planes, yeah. uh, in the shower, in the studio as well, but because I feel like... Planes are good for me writing too. Sensory deprivation. New because, York, LA, mm -hmm. five hours, only get interrupted for the meal, headphones on, just writing. Yeah. Get the window seat. Yeah. Get the work done. Because that's what's about the work. But the early morning for me is scary how good it, could, it, it, it is. It just puts you in a, a crazy headspace. I don't know what it is, what it, what it, the fatigue that's or. That's the muse when, when, I mean, when it visits. But you gotta be open to it. You know, a lot of times people aren't open to it, then. Well, let's talk it's not about that. Happen. Let's talk about that. Because that's a, that's a subject that I'm obsessed with, you know. Tapping into the subconscious. Here's the thing, though. Stevie Wonder hates me. You know why? Because every time I see him, I ask him about a record. <laughs> <laughs> the interlude, Live for the City. Right. Well, I want to know where did this, how did it happen? Right. Where did it come from? Yeah. 
We can never answer that. Can't. We can tell you how it happened. A lot of people just say just, just God, from. just it just came. Yeah. Well, I, I I say to like the youth all the time, like I consider myself a straw. Mm -hmm. We're vessels. Right. I don't have to, you know, I know the juice comes, the creative juice comes from somewhere else. But at the same time, I'm just happy to be in the glass. I ain't gotta be the coldest piece of ice in there. Right, the right. straw is just fine for me. Mm -hmm. So we say the straw. Now, how long you been in, in this game? It's tough business of music. About 20 years, maybe. That's a long time. Yeah. I mean, you, I mean, a whole lot of people fell off. Didn't have to, but I mean, you know, there is, a, there is an order in existence, there's an order. That's the thing about like, you know, people who cater to their uh, artistic inclinations, because I think everybody's artistically inclined in some way. But those who, who, who tune into and, and give. But you know, can I just say something real quick, not to cut you off? Sure. And this is why I say when I speak to students, parents kill more dreams than anybody. Oh yeah, for sure. So a lot of times, what you just said is true. People are born with these gifts but they're not nourished That's right. or encouraged by their parents. They're just with us, like on the vine, dead. And then these people grew up miserable. Because they have no purpose. Have no purpose. And their parents are pushed, you know, whether, whether they want to be a finance, you know, if you're a banker or a lawyer, whatever it is. And that's, that's not what was in their, 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 their child's heart. Right. Dream killers. And that's horrible. Here's another thing how God works. If the valuations would come first before they award me a tearship, I would have been kicked out of school. But the process saved you. The technology's not gonna be that, You're right. that, that old piano You're teacher. You're totally right. Who, who would teach you. You need the energy in the Son, room. that's the wrong note. That's right. In my pantheon, there are no greater artists than musicians for me. Because I think musicians are the closest to God.